Hi, my name is uh, Dave Whitesley. I'm Technical Director of Invisage UK Limited. I'd like to take this opportunity to show you uh, the application option settings within Inventor 2014. Now, in the application options for Inventor, uh, there are some changes in 2014. Uh, I'd like to go over these and other useful uh, changes to the application options. Um, that you can uh, save and export for other machines. The first thing I'd like to show you is the fact that at the bottom of the screen we do have an export and import buttons. They've been there for a few releases. So when you have actually changed the application options on one machine, you can export these out to an XML file um, on your server somewhere. And then when you're setting up other machines, you can import these settings to uh, the new workstations. First thing, the username at the top right hand cut corner here, this will actually uh, populate the author properties in the uh, drawings uh, very useful uh, change to uh, make please be aware of course that these um, settings that I'm showing you are only a guide if you have any questions at all then please contact me I'll give you the details at the end of this presentation update physical properties on save if you tick this this will give you um, at more accurate data on save the up the undo file size if you reduce this, uh, this affects the amount of available RAM. So this is the undo file size used by Inventor. You can reduce this. I've reduced it to 256 megabytes. This does directly affect the amount of available RAM. The annotation scale is set at one normally. Uh, I'm setting this at one and a half. This controls the size of dimensions during sketching, making them easier to read. The actual value of the dimension isn't affected by this value. Show command prompting, dynamic prompts, I switch this on. This moves prompting from the bottom left of the screen to the cursor. Much easier to see what's going on when uh, we're being prompted. The select other delay, I increase this slightly. It is rather annoying when using tube and pipe software. So I do increase this, it, it helps me when I'm selecting uh, circular edges for the inclusion or creation of tube and pipe runs. Okay, if we have a look at the sketch tab, this is where a lot is happening. Uh, first of all, I change the over constrained dimensions uh, behavior to apply driven dimension. This will avoid having a warning dialog box appear whenever an uh, over constraining dimension is created. I also check edit dimension when created. Most often you will edit dimensions anyway. I tend to turn off the auto project edges options keeping these turned off will result uh, sorry keeping these turned on will result in a bloated sketch and a larger file size the look at sketch plane on sketch creation it's a matter of personal preference uh, if it is turned on the viewport shifts to be looking straight at the sketch plane whenever a sketch is created or edited the previous viewpoint is restored when the sketch editing is done i personally turn this off i don't like the uh, the view changing all the time Turn off the display of grid lines, minor grid lines and axes. Again, a personal choice. This will clean up the sketch display and use less graphics resources. I certainly turn the axes off. Um, when you're sketching off the origin point, these can get in the way. Increasing the constraint and degrees of freedom symbol scale can make reading the constraint indicators much easier. On the drawing tab, the default drawing file type can be set to inventor drawing.dwg. Um, this setting allows easier drawing sharing with AutoCAD. Make sure the open option is set for non inventor DWG behavior. Uh, AutoCAD data can then be copied and pasted without stepping through the import wizard. I turn off the display of line weights, again, personal preference. In the save tab, uh, the do not list reference files stops any components being listed that do not require saving. When you uh, save an assembly, I've seen it a lot where people actually click on yes to all. You only need to click on OK. It will only save the files that need saving. Uh, but if we do not list the uh, files that default to no, it makes for a cleaner save dialog box. The prompt to save for recomputable updates must be set if you're using the vault. If we look at the file tab, there are three changes I normally make here. 
the uh, first of all let's take you to the config default template or the configure default template and when you install inventor uh, you do get the chance to configure your default templates on the initial install um, if you click on this button this will enable you to choose whether you're inches or millimeters and um, whether you are ISO or BSI or whatever whatever standard you want to use and this will then go ahead and it will overwrite the uh, templates with the correct uh, standard that you require however if you're a company sharing templates and styles libraries and so on then really you need to look at the next three edit boxes this one here um, this is where we point to the 2014 templates if you're migrating from 2013 you will have to migrate the 20 uh, the templates I tend to make a new copy on the server and then migrate the templates afterwards likewise with design data the styles library again on the server I make a copy of the uh, previous design data move it to a new folder and then migrate it to 2014 the default content center files always leave this location alone um, it is important that you don't uh, create a new folder for the new release because then anybody who opens up legacy assemblies will not be able to find the content center files that they've created beforehand so I tend to leave this alone from previous releases if you're using the vault then this is not really applicable so look at the uh, display tab um, I use application settings and then I, I like to show uh, edges uh, as black one color black it's up to you but uh, this is where you can set all the default for the application options whether your ISO or perspective where you want to do shaded with edges shaded and, and so on and so forth um, but if you tick use application settings then the settings that we create we, we create here or change here are then applicable to all new designs if you are an AutoCAD user and you want to reverse the direction of zoom then you do it down here in the zoom behavior where we see reverse direction We go to iFeatures, again if we're working um, on a shared network with a number of users then you may want to share these folders on a server so that everybody can find the shared uh, iFeatures and punch features. We look at Content Center, if you're using the Vault you may well actually be tick the uh, tick box here will be set to Autodesk Vault if you're using uh, desktop content then obviously the tick box for inventor desktop content uh, it's probably I haven't tried it but it's possible or probable that you can share this on the network drive as well um, it's up to you uh, but uh, be careful with rewrite databases if they read only you probably get away with it let's have a look at the colors um, turn off enable advanced enhanced highlighting you might find it easier uh, on the eyes avoid using the gradient or image background this is the least taxing on system resources if you're doing a presentation to anybody then use the presentation background with one color uh, certainly if you're using an overhead projector or something like that but the main one here really is to, in, to if you want to disable the enhanced enhanced highlighting you get less flashing on the screen when you're selecting things so look at the hardware tab uh, one major thing here really if you if you're seeing a slowdown of inventor just double check that software graphics isn't ticked uh, if it is then you're using the software for the uh, for graphics as opposed to the hardware the, you know the graphics card itself and if that is ticked then this will slow down the inventor performance or the graphics performance so just check that uh, if you aren't expecting to be using software graphics then obviously untick it and then you'll get the power of the onboard graphics card so have a look at the part tab uh, in 2014 the default has been changed to no new sketch on part creation if you want to use the previous method then just tick sketch on XY plane and then every time you start a new part it will give you a, a new sketch on the XY plane if you do that of course then you can't use the uh, um, primitives creation so easily and so on uh, it's up to you it's personal preference opaque surfaces if you don't want transparent surfaces tick this um, I like to display extended information after feature nodes in the browser it shows more information about the extrusions and the fillet sizes and chamfer sizes and so on but don't tick this if you're using iLogic
we go to the assembly tab most importantly in 2014 when you place a component into a blank assembly it is not the initial component is not grounded on the origin if you want to use the legacy method then tick place and ground first component at origin this is switched off by default on a 2014 install also the options for the express mode are at the bottom of the screen here i've got the express mode enabled and then i can then decide how many um, unique files exist in my assembly before it actually opens in express mode by uh, default you can change the settings down the bottom here so there we are there's a quick run through of the application options within inventor and also what's new in 2014 if you've got any questions then please uh, contact me uh, on these con this contact information here um, by email or through our website where you'll see our blog our technical blog as well if you want to look at any of our other videos then go to the youtube channel and search for envisage uk ltd thank you very much